going to sketch out here. Um, so why aesthetics? You know, it's, 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 it's a term, and it has its history, and of course aesthetics is a term that comes into being in the 18th century with the work of Baumgarten um, at a moment in cultural history when the idea of having, well, let's face it, discriminating taste um, is starting to be <laughs> um, an asset in relationship to class-based practices and the capacity to distinguish between those things that have a long lineage within certain kinds of made traditions and those things that are part of mass culture and mass production. So it's interesting to think that aesthetics emerges at that particular moment and that aesthetics is defined as that branch of philosophy that is concerned with sensation and perception. Well, sensation and perception aren't exactly the same thing as we know. Sense has to do with the, you know, sort of moment of apperception of some kind of stimuli. Perception has to do with the processing of that into some kind of recognized and recognizable pattern. And then cognition has to do with something far more complicated. And as my own studies in, in aesthetics have progressed, I've moved from an interest in the notion of aesthetics per se um, as a kind of structuring set of principles, whether they have to do with the understanding of perception and sensation, or whether they have to do with a political agenda, the last great aesthetic system builder having been Adorno and a very important influence in many ways. But aesthetics as a system, aesthetics as a set of principles for understanding and um, really negotiating our own relationship to cultural objects and artifacts as well as ways of making, speaking, and being as in intellectual subjects in the world. All of that exists as, as an aspect of aesthetics. But I've become more interested in the idea of aesthetics as, it's, as aesthesis. Um, aesthesis, in that sense, is really the science of knowing. And I do distinguish um, that concept from the idea of knowledge. And I've become increasingly interested in knowing as something that is, as some of you who read my work responded to, as something that is situated, partial, necessarily partial and embodied, historically and culturally, um, you know, qualified and modified. And there's a humility in talking about knowing rather than talking about knowledge. And to understand an aesthetic approach to knowing is to posit that from the beginning, we understand that we can never be outside of our own experience of knowledge. We're always inside of it. And by being inside of it, we can never claim any totalizing, rational, or observer-independent relationship to systems of knowledge. We might create them. You know, we might create a classification system or a taxon <coughs> taxonomy or some way of organizing or categorizing knowledge in the world to share in a consensual way with others. But, the, but that's different from imagining that there's a thing called knowledge that you could have possess in any final or terminal way. And so it's that lack of finality, that understanding that knowing is embodied within the circumstances of experience that really, <coughs> to me, shifts the ground from aesthetics of, of knowledge uh, or, and epistemology to an aesthesis, a condition of knowing. So for me, knowing is really an important political move as well as an important intellectual move because it resituates the experience of being within the always impossible possibility of ever knowing anything completely. You never do. And so giving that up, you know, it's kind of, uh, uh, it, here's the analogy in vernacular terms. When I first moved to New York, I got the Village Voice, as any newbie to New York does, and I looked at the Village Voice list of what was on that week, and I went, oh my God, I'll never be able to do everything. So a friend of mine said to me, you've got Village Voice syndrome. Okay, <laughs> because what you think when you move to New York is you have to do everything that's in New York. No, you just have to do something and you will be having the New York experience. The difference between the idea that you look at everything in the village voice and think, oh my God, I've got to do it all, and the recognition that no, all you have to do is, is be and do, and then you recognize the difference between knowing, which is partial, situated, and you're just going to choose one thing, and knowledge, which is I have to know everything that's on. So that shift is, is humbling, right? But it's such a relief. I'll tell you, you get your weekends back. <laughs> um, so so I, reckon, <laughs> I recommend this just as a kind of like self-help approach to being. Okay, so go for his thesis <laughs> and you know, knowing over knowledge. All right. But my, my investigations of, of the construction of knowledge have also shifted from, you know, the old-fashioned sort of um, 
uh, ideas of, um, you know, sort of structures and systems um, and knowing is something that has to do with somebody here who knows something there to a constructivist position. And I don't know how many of you know about r radical constructivism, but if I say the name Ernst von Glasersfeld, does that ring a lot of bells in people's heads? Anybody here know Ernst von Glasersfeld? Uh, Francisco Barella and Umberto Maturana? Okay, so these are canonical texts, really, really important and very interesting. Um, Heinz von Forster is the other name to know here, but these are a series of figures who came out of artificial intelligence and cognitive studies in biology who addressed the idea of what is it to have sentience? What is it to have awareness within a knowledge of complex systems theory? So when we get into complex systems theory and we think about advanced systems and um, the question which has been with us since antiquity, right, and probably earlier, um, is, is awareness and sentience something that distinguishes human beings and it's an aware creatures, we might attribute it to other aware creatures. I'm a big, you know, speciesist person, so I think there's lots of awareness in the world beyond those of us who, you know, pretend to walk upright. Um, so <laughs> anyway, but, um, uh, but uh, the, the question of what constitutes awareness, how do we have sentience, and does sentience and self-awareness and um, in the kind of um, capacity for uh, evolutionary biology, for an organism to actually become something other than what it is at its initial moment. Is that something that is a, a vitalist principle, vitalism is part of this tradition, that actually distinguishes organic from in, uh, inorganic matter, um, or is there some other way to approach the idea of, of, of knowingness, of consciousness, of awareness? And constructivism comes out of the intersection of complex systems theory with theories of biological evolution, um, sentience, awareness, and self-determination to say that the awareness of being is something that is always produced in relationship to a set of conditions of existence and that our ability to know is not completely hardwired into us. We're not Kantian creatures who have a capacity to see certain kinds of colors and to taste certain kinds of tastes. We have those capabilities as organisms but our awareness of those capabilities modifies, mutates, and transforms as a mental pattern of cognition in relationship to certain affordances of the world. So um, in case you don't know it, you don't have pictures of the world that go through your eyes up to your brain. You might still have that little notion in your head, but that's not the way it works, okay? Our eyes don't take pictures and send them to our brains. Um, and uh, vision, <laughs> it's amazing how we have these ideas. How many people here think that your eyes take pictures and send them to their brains? <laughs> okay, exactly. Okay, it's still with us. Um, but that instead, we are, you know, we are sensate um, uh, potentialities, capabilities, who meet a set of conditions. And experience is constructive. And the notion of constructivism is that there's a codependent <coughs> relationship between organisms and their capabilities and the phenomena we perceive. Who in this world?